Today I'm showing you some of my favorite Batman pieces in my collection. Welcome back to Comics Are Dope. I'm BJ Kicks and it is Bat-tober. It's October and as if we needed a reason to talk about Batman every day, it's Bat-tober and people talk about Batman every day. Now, originally my idea was to do a Batman review every day. And then I realized my shooting schedule is not going to allow for that. But I am going to do quite a few Batman reviews. So stay tuned throughout the month of October and beyond, because let's face it, Batman is my favorite character. I'm never not talking about Batman. Stay tuned to the channel for that. But to kick off Bat-tober, I want to do something a little low key and show you some of my favorite Batman items in my collection. Because, I mean, I'm a bit of a hoarder and I buy a lot of stuff or have bought a lot of stuff over the years. And a lot of it is Batman. So we're going to talk, take a look at some of my favorite Batman things. Now, this is not going to be a list of my favorite Batman collected editions or anything like that. We'll talk about that in a different video. For this video, we're going to focus on just kind of trinkets, some single issues. I got a slab that we're going to talk about, posters, toys, etc. But we'll do the collected editions, the Omnis in another video. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss that one. Now, let's go ahead and start this one off. Uh, I feel like you can't have a, a best of Batman list without one of my favorite Batman single issues. This is a slab and this is my First appearance of Damian Wayne. This is Batman issue 655, written by Grant Morrison. I believe this is the first issue of the Grant Morrison run. Um, it was written by uh, Grant Morrison with art by Adam Kubert. Excuse me. Andy Kubert. I always get those two mixed up. But anyway, cover by Andy Kubert as well. Very, very nice cover. Now, this cover in my opinion, is iconic without it being the first appearance. And I guess I should be clear, this is the first cameo appearance of Damian Wayne. Uh, he gets his full appearance in the next issue, 656. And in 657, we see him on the cover of a Batman book for the first time. But anyway, a lot to love about this. I love this classic Batman trade dress. Um, I like this trade dress a lot better than uh, the current Batman trade dress. But hey, Again, I love this. The bat's going out to the corner. Uh, and I actually bought this book already graded from the Ultimate Comics live show. Um, I don't have a lot of CGC graded comics. And the ones that I do have, I bought already slabbed. Um, I've never sent a book to the CGC. I'm just kind of afraid to do so. And also because I buy books to read, not to like invest. And so like other books that I have that I feel like could be worth something, it would cost me more to slab than it's worth because uh, it's all sentimental to me and it's never getting sold. But anyway, kicking it off, my first appearance of Damian Wayne in Batman 655 in a CGC 9.8. Now, the next item technically counts as a collected edition, but this is one of those pieces that I got really early in my collecting journey that I'm really proud of. This is the complete Frank Miller Batman. This is a leather bound book. Um, it's actually technically it's part of a set. There's another leather bound book collecting a bunch of the Joker's greatest stories. I think it's called like his greatest adventures or something like that. It's purple. I don't have that one, but I do have this. This is the complete Frank Miller Batman, which at the time it was published was everything that Frank Miller had done on Batman, including the Dark Knight Returns, Batman Year One, and wanted santa claus dead or alive right there in the middle but it's a beautiful leather bound book with the silver gilded pages uh, love that and as you can see we got batman year one to start it off those four issues drawn by david mazzucchelli and then in the middle of that we've got oh love this cover Ken Hazer has recently done a bunch of Darkwing Duck uh, homage covers and homaging Batman covers with Darkwing. And that was one of my favorites. Uh, but anyway, I'm trying to flip to the Santa Claus story. And here we are. 
wanted, Santa Claus, dead or alive. That is so random. I think I've shown off this collection in a different video before, but there's a Dark Knight Returns. This was just one of those things where it was, like I said, when I first got into comics, so I bought this sometime late 2019 or so. And um, it had been going on eBay for like crazy money, like $150 at the time. And I just got really lucky and I got this at an auction for somewhere around 40, I want to say. And as you can see, the cover price on this was $29.95 when it came out. So don't quote me, but you might be able to get this for a better deal nowadays. But that's the complete Frank Miller Batman, or at least it was the complete Frank Miller Batman until Frank Miller kept living and writing more Batman. Like there's like two more volumes of The Dark Knight. Three? Because The Golden Child is like Dark Knight 4. Anyway, there's a lot more Frank Miller Batman. Now, let's take a quick break from the books that I'm going to show off to uh, show off my favorite Batman toy. Now, I've got a lot of little Batman trinkets in this house. I got a Batmobile over there. I got a bunch of stuff that I've collected over the years and that's been gifted to me as well. But my favorite piece to look at has got to be this McFarlane Toys gold label Batman the Animated Series Batman. Now, as you can see, this, cre this recreates that um, infamous, famous, title sequence scene where the lightning flashes behind Batman. I knew that was going to happen. So there's there's a little lightning bolt behind here. And uh, if it wasn't for me making rookie mistakes and leaving it in the on position forever, I'd be able to show you that you could press a button and this lightning bolt lights up blue. But now I need batteries. And just let me tell you, if you got to like unscrew something to put batteries in it, that's typically like the barrier to entry for me. But yeah, this McFarlane Toys Batman the Animated Series. By the way, this figure is absolutely just like a reskin of a figure that already existed. So the fact that he got me to buy it a second time. Wait, maybe I didn't buy the first one. So shout out to him. Yeah, I actually didn't buy the first one. So yeah, there we go. I wasn't a big fan of it. They got a new animated series wave coming out from McFarlane, though, and Mr. Freeze. It's a dope Mr. Freeze. Anyway, this is this is definitely on the list of my favorite Batman items in the collection. Next, and this is in no particular order, by the way, it's got to be this. This is a poster done by Ken Lashley, and uh, our eagle-eyed viewers may have noticed it's the same image that's right there behind me on the wall. But this one's done in black and white. Uh, it's a Dark Knight Returns style Batman, um, which you can see a little bit better uh, with the full color pictures. But it's a Dark Knight Returns style Batman. And this is just, it's just an awesome piece. Um, and I bought this in a poster pack from Ken Lashley ages ago. It came with a bunch of different colors, black backgrounds. There was the red one, a blue one. There was a grayscale one, which... I gave away to the folks from Married with Comics. Um, and then there was this. Now, I actually have two of these. I've got this one that's signed in gold ink and another that's signed in silver ink. But the gold is my favorite. I just like the way it pops off the page. But Ken Lashley became one of my favorite comic artists. And being a part of his Facebook group and being able to participate in some of those art drops that he does, uh, it's just among the highlights of my collecting experience. So... That made a spot on the list, um, like I said, in no particular order. Now, we can take a look at some of my favorite single issues, whether it's just because it's a great cover or what. So, the first, I would say, unique piece that I have is this. This is a copy of Detective Comics issue 1000 uh, with that awesome wraparound cover by Jim Lee. Um Funny enough, I didn't realize how close I was to that era of Batman. Like when I started collecting, I think Ted of Comics 1000 would have been like 2017, 2018. And I started reading comics in 2019. So anyway, it's Ted of 1000 right here. But what's unique about this is it actually has signatures as well. So this one is signed by James Tynan IV right here in this corner. Tom King up here and Greg Capullo. Like, 
if I'd gotten it, if this was signed by Scott Snyder, it would be like this, the, the holy grail of new millennium Batman comics. But I actually bought this on eBay with all the signatures on it, uh, for a really good price, honestly. And I think that's just because it's not graded or anything. There's no certificate of authenticity. So, um, and at the time, that whole CBCS thing where they verify the signatures wasn't a thing. Um, but I mean, I've compared the signatures. They all look authentic to me. So that's just really cool. And this book has stories featuring, you know, words and art by each of the guys that signed this. So really cool piece. And I got it for a really good price. So I'm proud of it. Another Batman cover that I'm proud of for no like real reason, except that I just like homage variants is this. This is a uh, Batman 118. This was the beginning of the Joshua Williamson run, which uh, we call it a run. He only had a story arc. He did like six issues of Batman before. Um, who's writing Batman now? Jeez. Chip Zdarsky. Before Chip Zdarsky took over, we had uh, uh, Josh Williamson. Uh, but anyway, this is an homage variant by Victor Bogdanovich and Alejandro Sanchez. Um, obviously homaging that Spider-Man number one, even like taking cues from the trade dress. It was just a really done homage variant, really well done homage variant. So there we go. Batman 118. Uh, this is not signed by anyone, not a rare cover at all, but I still like it. Okay, so I almost forgot to show you this next item, but this has got to be like top two or three items in this room, period. But this is my Detective Comics 880 short box. This is a short box featuring that infamous cover art by Jock um, all over the box. I mean, this definitely wins the prize for like the creepiest item in my room. And... uh an item I have to kind of keep tucked away so that it's not like scaring my kids, but I love this short box. Now, the short box is the attraction. Like, it's just the closest I'm going to get to owning a Detective Comics issue 880. And I loved it long before I ever read the story that it's the cover of. But Batman Black Mirror, just as a side note, is a great Batman story. And if you didn't know, Dick Grayson is Batman in Batman Black Mirror. I don't think that's a spoiler. Maybe that's a spoiler. I don't know. That might be a spoiler. But Dick Grayson is Batman, and it's just a great book. I don't want to spoil anything else. So go read Black Mirror if you haven't already. What I will say about Black Mirror, though, is people talk like Jock is the selling point of that book. And I mean, to be fair, he did some amazing covers. There's a lot of great jock work in that book. But for me, my favorite parts of that story are the Francisco Francovia pages. Man, uh, his storytelling is just at another level. And jock is good. But Francisco Francovia is no slouch. And he has some of my favorite work in that series. So hot take, jock is not the best part of Scott Snyder's Batman Black Mirror. Anyway, all that said, I love this cover and this short box. And uh, it's super heavy because it is full of all of my like Batman stuff that's not necessarily in continuity or it's not like part of the ongoing Batman series that I'm collecting. So I got random issues of Legends of the Dark Knight in here. All-Star Batman, the uh, Scott Snyder All-Star Batman that came out in Rebirth. Oh, that's cool. Batman Judge Dredd. Got a couple of copies of that. My Spawn Batman crossover. And this Dustin Wynn cover for the Batman 80 page Giant 2010. Love that. Anyway. As you can tell, this was really just a way for me to sneak more Batman items into this already too long video. But uh, ooh. this is technically the oldest comic book I own, period. September. When is this? When did this come out? It's a 12 cent comic. Brave and the Bold, issue 67. And if I'm not mistaken, this is when Brave and the Bold becomes a Batman title. 
before this issue, Brave and the Bold was like a bunch of different team ups between the DC universe. And then somebody was like, you know what? These books ain't selling. You better make Batman team up with everybody. So fun stuff. All right, let's go to the next item. Now, this next piece, um, this was a gift to me from a member of the K-Squad. We shop at the same LCS. I guess it's now the Comics Are Dope community. But my homie Keith sent this book to me. He had it waiting for me at my shop a couple Christmases ago. This is Batman Gotham Knights, issue number 32. This really awesome Brian Ballin cover. Um, you can see we got Batman over here. We got Bruce Wayne over here at the infamous clock tower. That'll get you access to the Bat Cave. Um, and man, this issue is honestly a pretty fun issue. It's basically just like a day in the life of Bruce Wayne. You're seeing him going around, uh, giving money to different charities and causes and stuff. And like all throughout the issue, there's a bunch of timestamps. And then once night falls, you see him operating as Batman, foiling a, a couple of uh, petty robberies and stuff, checking in with Oracle, checking in with Nightwing, checking in with the Justice League before he finally calls it a night somewhere around like 5 a.m. Um, it was just very cool. This uh, is just one of those books where it's, this is what comics should be. It's just a nice done in one issue that really shows the well-roundedness of Batman as a character. Reading this, uh, I reread it just for this video. And it just makes me wish we got more simple Batman stories like this. Very cool. Written by Devin Grayson, uh, with art by Roger Robinson, and inks by the late John Floyd. So. Why is this special to me? Uh, I love this cover. It was a gift and the issue is actually really good too. All right. So next up on the list is a pair of uh, cheap reprints, but they just brought me so much joy. So first up is this uh, facsimile edition or dollar comics reprint. It's not a facsimile technically because this trade dress is different, but this dollar comics reprint of Justice League issue number one, Keith Giffen, J.M. Demetrius. Something McGuire, Kevin McGuire, I want to say. Terry Austin inks. I don't know. Anyway, uh, this, the first appearance of the Justice League International, if you will. Uh, we got Guy Gardner here. And of course, this is the infamous issue where Batman knocks Guy Gardner out with one punch. Now, I feel like I got into comics at like the perfect time where DC, which was my favorite publisher um, and honestly still is, was doing a lot of really cool initiatives to bring in new readers to older stories. So they were doing these dollar comics reprints. I got the Justice League number one. I got the Swamp Thing number 20, the Watchmen number one. I basically subscribed to all the dollar comics. So every week there was some story that I had never heard of, but had a great gateway into because of these dollar comics reprints. So this Justice League number one was an awesome addition to the collection and actually got me to read more Justice League, like this run specifically. I need to like read the rest of it. It's like a three volume omnibus set. I've only read like six issues of this. So very cool. Justice League number one, Batman punching Guy Gardner, knocking him out with one blow. <laughs> and Blue Beetle got such a kick out of that moment, which makes it even more funny. And then another reprint on that list was this uh, Batman Adventures issue 12, obviously uh, super famous for being the first appearance of one Harley Quinn, Harleen Quinzel. And funny enough, uh, they did this dollar comics reprint, but uh, they also did like the Batman Adventures Continue series. And when they did that, they started reprinting the Batman Adventures from back in the day. Um, but they only lasted like seven issues before they canceled that whole initiative. And I was mad because I was really only planning it to get this without this dollar comics branding on top of it. But anyway, Batgirl Adventures 12, this just reminds me of the fact that I really wanted a Bad Girl Adventures 12 and had to settle for this dollar comic version of it. And now we've got the Batman Adventures Omnibus. So, hey, it's all good. Maybe I should slap this. It's just a goofy thing. It's funny. Another issue that means a lot to me, we are we're definitely like still in the early days of my collecting. We're still in 2019. But this, this is Detective Comics issue 1013. And this significant 
because it was my first time like really pre-ordering a comic. Like, I don't know where I saw it online, but I had been, I had started like Googling comics every week and all that, like really getting into the hobby. And I saw this cover image online and I was like, yo, I called the shop and I was like, hey, I want Detective Comics starting with this issue, 1013. Um, and I ordered it like three months in advance and kept waiting like, oh, is this issue yet? No, it wasn't. And I just, I just really love this cover of Mr. Freeze looking at Batman in the snow globe. If I had to do a custom uh, uh, slipcase or a custom dust jacket for that Peter Tomasi Batman omnibus, this is absolutely the cover I would choose. I remember being mad when it came out because it had a trade dress on it. And I didn't realize that preview images were virgin images and that they would all have trade dresses added. So anyway, I not definitely think the, the year of the villain tag takes away from this, but whatever. Detective Comics issue 1013. This is the start of my Detective Comics run. I have since gone back and filled in everything between this and issue 1000. And my Detective Comics run has been unbroken ever since. Also, if you get this issue, it's such a fake out. Mr. Freeze is not in this issue. This issue deals with, I don't even remember who it was. Was it the Spectre? It was somebody that was not Mr. Freeze. And then it led to the Mr. Freeze stuff that started after this issue. Definitely the, I, the, the trade book or text mark, textbook. Definitely the textbook definition of a cover bait and switch. So cool stuff there, but. Let's get out of the early days of my collection and just uh, show off something that is just cool to me for reasons that became cool to me and relevant to me later on. So this, this is Detective Comics issue number 600. And I'd be lying if I told you I read this story. I've not read this story because it is part three in the Blind Justice storyline. And I don't own any of the other issues in that storyline. Um, but I bought this just because I thought it was a cool cover. And at the time when I bought this, I didn't recognize the cover artist as one Dennis Cowan. And as a fun piece of milestone trivia, Dennis Cowan reconnected with his childhood friend, Derek Dingle, after Derek Dingle, Milestone Media co-founder, saw this comic on newsstands and saw Dennis Cowan's name on it. And was like, oh, snap, Dennis works for DC. Let me get in touch with them by calling DC. So without this comic, perhaps we don't get Milestone Media 10 years later, which is just wild. I said 10 years later. This is from May 1989. So March 1989, exactly three years later, we get Milestone. So cool stuff. Cool stuff. But anyway, Detective Comics. Issue 700. And this also celebrating the 50th anniversary of Batman. And now, of course, it's been 30 years since then. That's crazy. Awesome cover, though. Now, the next item that I wanted to show off is just a nice feel good book. Um, this is back when I was just buying whatever back issues just looked cool. And I was still buying a lot of stuff on the Ultimate Comics live show. And they had this random two pack or two part series. And this was Batman Legends of the Dark Knight issues 190 and 191. It was the cover to 191 that made me buy this. I probably paid like $3 for the set of these. And what this is, is a Mr. Freeze's last stand. Freeze's final rest is what this is called. And it's basically a story about Mr. Freeze kidnapping a lady that looks like his wife and just all the ups and downs that go with it and how Batman foiled his attempt and, you know, basically kicked Freeze out of Gotham. But what I love about this book is that it's told from Bruce Wayne's perspective and it's just Bruce sitting by the fire recounting this story to Alfred and something about that being the way the story was told just made me love it a lot. And I read this, I don't know why, but I was like out of town with my wife or something. And I brought this with me. And I remember reading this in the hotel, probably our anniversary or something. But anyway, 
that was just a fun reading experience uh having to do with my favorite uh bat or my favorite character batman and one of my favorite batman rose gallery members mr freeze but yeah just a fun issue read it it's on dc universe infinite so check it out another i another iconic cover this is a facsimile edition of batman issue 251 uh by denny o'neill and neil adams this is the joker's Five Way Revenge, the book that basically redefines Joker as like this criminal mastermind, not just like some kooky dude with a clown mask on. Um, and like I said, this is a facsimile edition that honestly is in really good condition. I should probably like at the very least put it in like a gator guard or something. Um, but it's just an iconic cover. I love this and a pretty dope story. So one of my favorite Batman items in the collection. Um, another one from the early days of my collection. This is Batman starring in Detective Comics issue 824 written by Paul Dini. Um, and I honestly just bought this. This is one, this is from the days where I would go to Atomic Empire on my lunch break in Durham, North Carolina. I'd go over there and my lunch break was only like 30 minutes and I would go, I'd spend 10 minutes just getting there and back another 20 minutes just browsing the back issue bins at Atomic Empire. I saw this cover and I was like, oh, that's a dope cover. And so I bought it, not realizing that it was Paul Dini, the uh, writer of much of the Batman animated series. And I really just liked the cover, but I liked the issue inside as well. And lo and behold, it's one of the greatest Ted Comics runs of all time. And now I own it in the omnibus format in the Batman by Paul Dini Omnibus Collection. So, cool stuff. Just a fun cover. And it just reminds me of those grueling days at work where my only solace was going to the comic shop on my lunch break. So, the last piece that I'm going to highlight today um, is probably one of the most fun times I've had buying comics and probably also one of like the examples of like, rookie mistakes but this is my collection of one in 100 covers for batman three jokers um i should note that this is not a one in 100 cover this was a one in 25 variant for the second printing i have never seen a ratio variant on a second printing of a comic book but yeah anyway the event that was batman three jokers uh written by Jeff Johns, art by Jason Fabic, a beautiful book that I bought way too many times because I own every single cover to every issue of that series, except, except the one in like 450 variant for issue number one. But these right here, these uh, Jason Fabic line art variant covers for issue, this was issue one. Yep, book one, book two, and book three. These were ratio variants that were, uh, looks like I paid $80 for this one. I definitely paid $100 for this one, if not the first one. So like I said, this is some of the most fun I had collecting. This was still, what, mid-2020, 2021? 2020. Anyway, some of the most fun I had buying comics, but I was still really green and early into the game. But this was the first thing they did with Batman that I was like, oh, I want in on that. And I want all in on that. So this is like the only example of me paying crazy money for ratio variants, like right off the bat. And to me, I don't know. It's worth it because I like these. But like, if these were to come out tomorrow, I would not pay 300 for this set. But um, I still like the covers. I didn't really love the book as much as I thought I would. But the art was really amazing. And I mean, I still haven't seen Joker covers this good since. So definitely a highlight of my Batman collection and representative of the whole Three Jokers event that will always have a special place in my heart 
as the story that taught me to not buy everything. <laughs> so that was a quick look at some of my favorite Batman items in the collection. I got more stuff, but you know, like for example, we were just talking about three jokers. I've got a set of all the cards from the three jokers event. It's stuff like this. Uh, somebody should have been like, yo, why are you being so obsessive? But alas, I'm me. So anyway, happy Bat-tober, Batman month, if you will. We'll probably do another video of like just some of my favorite Batman toys and breaking down this shelf and some of my favorite collected editions. So stay tuned. So stay tuned to the channel. Make sure you hit the bell icon so that you're notified when that video comes out. And I'll see you guys in another video real soon. Until then, Stay safe, stay awesome, and uh, read something dope today with Batman in it. Peace.